So there's an argument out there that gold and silver could be dropping and dropping all the way to $1,600, which really is just a made up number, but put that aside for now. The argument is just that buying gold or silver is a bad bet. And I think that I can destroy that argument, most of it anyway. Gold's annual gain for 2023 now sits at 5%. We've seen a little bit of a dip over the last few weeks and that number has gone down. Silver, it's down 5% year to date. I've said this before, but you can pick a window of time to tell just about any story that you'd like to tell about either metal really, but silver's performance over the past 12 years, it's a really good example. It's pretty terrible. It's lost 50% of its value, but why would you pick that time frame? Did somebody buy a huge amount of silver and then just decide to hold on to it for 12 years? It doesn't make any sense to me. They would have had 11 years to then buy when it was down. I guess it's possible though. It's just not at all likely. It's a contrived story. We could look at year-to-date performance though and get an idea of opportunity cost, how one asset has performed compared to another because traders are definitely looking through that lens and it's probably the most important thing to understand if you want an idea of why price is where it's at. So we're going to take a look. Uh, before we get back to it, if you're looking for precious metals, hit up SD Bullion. New customers even get gold and silver for spot. It's sdbullion.com slash new. So the two big movers for gold and silver right now are global demand and Fed policy. And they go together here. If Fed policy leads to a stronger dollar, well, it gets more expensive to buy gold and other currencies, and that decreases global demand. Demand in Asia is a particular driver, and China's economic outlook is taking a beating right now. We're going to have to come back to that in another one. The focus, or at least the starting point here, really needs to be the dollar's performance. And we have charts to help us out there. The DXY charts the US dollar value against the currencies of six trading partners. We hear about the Dixie a lot, but the dollar strength is a lot more than that. It's gonna reference other currencies as well. And that currency exchange, that rate affects the price of gold and other currencies. So it has the effect on relative price in price-based demand, like I just mentioned. If something gets more expensive, the bigger players buy less of it. That's part of it. From an investment perspective or a trading perspective, however you want to look at it, there's also the case of competing assets in opportunity cost or risk premium. Treasury products, it's a really good example. They're a big competitor to the traditional safe havens like gold or silver. Now, normally bond yields, they're about as exciting as drying paint, but the yield on a one-year treasury bill right now is something like 5.37%. That makes it a very easy investment with a respectable and a guaranteed return. That's going to be a really strong draw for institutional investors. So I mentioned opportunity cost. The opportunity cost of holding gold or silver would be the delta between what you could earn on a treasury product and then what you could earn on your gold or silver. If we're talking about physical gold or silver, we'd also have to subtract the buy to sell spread for the premium. So if you buy something at 7% premium, you sell for 2%, buy to sell is 5 so the numbers aren't going to favor gold or silver if you're looking for a one-year investment. That spread, maybe it's more like 3 to 5%. If you're buying and selling inside of a year, that could knock out some or all of your gain. Like I just mentioned, we're currently looking at a 5% gain on gold in 2023 and a 5% loss on silver. Again, that's just for the year. Those numbers have both come down over the past few weeks, so we're looking at it at a bad time. But that also speaks to the guaranteed yield aspect of other options. With short-term treasury products, the rate is mostly set when you buy, so you know how it's going to perform at the outset. So really what this tells us is that there are competing products outperforming physical gold and silver right now. And that performance is dragging the price down for both metals. Now, there are other reasons to buy gold or silver that really can't be quantified. And I'm not just talking about the fact that it's really shiny. This stuff is kind of mesmerizing. In year-to-date price performance, you have to figure in there's an insurance aspect that none of us could really calculate. Nobody knows what the event would be. Nobody knows when it could happen. Nobody knows how high it could send prices. But just to be realistic, I'm not going to pin all of my plans on a hope or on a fear. The numbers have always been clear enough to me to tell me not to buy gold or silver thinking that they're going to outperform any other investment vehicle. Are there are chart patterns predicting that gold could go to $1,600. I don't watch technical analysis for 
silver. Silver is just too volatile, but the chart patterns for gold, they amount really to humans drawing lines across points. So it's not anything that's actually charted. It's just more of a connect the dots kind of a situation with lines extrapolated. And if you extrapolate one of those lines across the lows for gold since 2020, you're going to see a descending angle, and that's going to lead to $1,600. Actually, it's going to lead to zero if you let it continue to infinity. So the $1,600 is really a little bit of an imaginary number on an imaginary line, but it's used enough that I'm just going to reference it as a possible point for gold. That would be if things go really poorly for gold or if these charts actually mean something. Now, I'm not writing off technical analysis in general, but this is somebody drawing a line across three points as a way to tell the future. So why would you buy this stuff if the price is possibly going to be going down? You're talking about $1,600. What if that happens? Well, I'm going to focus on gold here. I usually do, but since I mentioned silver, I'll just say that the reason here is that the premiums on physical silver make it a tough bet for me. So if the price were to drop to $1,600 for an ounce of gold, I would happily be buying at that price. I don't use gold like somebody might use a one-year treasury bill in that I'm not planning to sell anything that I buy inside of a year, unless it's some kind of collector piece that I'm buying to flip. So if I'm going to drive down into why I'm buying it, I have to look at it in three parts. First is the idea of locking in wealth. It's not just letting savings depreciate with inflation. Now, my idea of buying gold is that some of the purchases are going to be made at a discount and some are going to be made at a premium. But over time, it's going to average out and beat the inflation adjusted value of the dollar. Now, that's not a guarantee. If there's one thing that I hold on faith here, it's that my purchases will at least continue to beat inflation over time. And I say continue to because my current holdings are well past that. So the next part has to be about diversification. That part's important to me. Ideally, if one asset is lagging, then another is outperforming. It's a simple matter of balance. I'm not hoping for complete balance, but at least I'd have a life jacket in the mix for any likely scenario. And maybe that part about being diversified comes as a surprise because I have a channel here on gold, but because I talk about a lot of different reasons that I like it does not mean that I would go all in on it. There's just too much going on. So the last part, the third part, because I'm leaving out the part of the childhood dreams of finding buried treasure, is that a lot of what I buy is purchased with money that I was otherwise wasting or money that I figured out a way to make passively in order to buy gold specifically or maybe even some gamble that paid off and I just want to lock it away. So that comparison against current T-bill performance or something like that, showing a bond or a bill, how it's outperforming gold or silver right now, well... Sure, that's true, but in a lot of cases, the actual comparison for the performance of a gold purchase that I've made really would be wasteful spending. The opportunity cost is more or less zero in my case. I might enjoy a few more nights on the town or some unnecessarily expensive pocket knife, but they wouldn't have any kind of monetary return, or not much, not nearly as much. I rarely buy gold with money that I was originally planning to invest. I buy it with discretionary spending cash. And I've talked about this before, but you get the same hit buying gold that you might get from buying a new watch, a new bicycle, a new fur hat, or some kind of crazy pocket knife. But you can still sell the gold in an emergency, but you can't do that with some of those fancy gadgets. You certainly can't do it with your past nights on the town. So do any of those performance comparisons make gold or even silver a bad bet right now? Well, Depends on how you look at it. If you're one of the people in the comments comparing gold or silver over the past 12 years, it's probably a bad bet for you. I can absolutely destroy that argument. The 12 years is 144 months. If you buy monthly rather than everything all at once at that incredible peak and then just ignore the buying opportunities for 11 years following, well, you're actually ahead. Imagine that. A grand majority of those months would have been picking up gold for less than it's worth today. I've been doing it for 15 years and I'm ahead. But again, if you're just trying to swoop and poop in the comments, you can cherry pick points in time to tell really any story that you'd like to. If you're buying the way that I've been talking about, though, keeping those three ideas in mind, you buy over time, you don't go all in, and you buy with money that you might have otherwise been wasting, well, I think it's a fantastic bet. In a case like that, you're covered in the event of a significant emergency, you have capital for a significant opportunity, you have a stake in that lottery aspect if prices do shoot the moon. In worst case scenario, you have an asset that you can always sell. Sell it really easily. In best case scenario, if you never need it, well, you have something profound to hand down to an heir. 
Still seems like a pretty solid bet to me. So there it is. I think any negative view on gold or silver probably stems from a comparison to an asset class that really works in a way that metals weren't intended. Pretty simple. A price has been down long enough for some negativity to sprout. That slide has not been steep in any way, but it has been a while since we've seen a bounce above it. That's my take on the whole thing. Anyway, let us know what you think. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care. Thank you.